Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the webinar. As you can see, tonight's webinar is uh, all about getting started. And this is the first of eight webinars that I run. I call it the Clean Easy Circle of Success. Um, and so for any new starters, this is really the, the best one to, to watch or to catch up with um, when they're first starting their business. Uh, the first kind of two or three there are all about the retail side. So, you know, your first four weeks and building your customer base. Then four and five, we talk a bit more about the team building, um, kind of getting started and then supporting team members when they join. And then the last three are really about your own personal development. In fact, those three there could be, could appear anywhere in the in the circle. Excuse me, because they're all very uh, all very kind of relevant, regardless of where you are in your business. But anyway, that's where we are. So uh, we're starting off on number one. What we're going to be covering this evening, it should take 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Um, just about getting started straight away. Don't take ages learning and reading and preparing. Get your catalogues out and earning some money straight away. Um, uh, explain a bit about the 30-day bonus. And then going through preparing your catalogues, planning for where you're going to deliver them and how you deliver them. Then actually doing the work, delivering those catalogues, collecting them back up again placing that first order, receiving the goods, and then delivering your order. So pretty much by the end of this, you should know everything that you need to know to make some money out of clean easy. So getting started. I'm a big believer in get started now. Whenever I've got new starters, I, I do send them quite a lot of information about how to get started and what the business is like. But I also say to them, just don't spend hours and hours reading and researching everything. Get started straight away and then learn how to improve it as you go through. Learn on the job, as it were. Um, a good quote there, ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. Get, get started while you're all enthusiastic. So um, immediately, what I would say, the, fir the first thing to do is just to write a list of 20 or so people that you know. And this is really good practice for when you start to get into the team building as well. But just um, make that list and tell your friends that you've started a new business. Because if they're local to you, then hopefully they'll say, oh, drop a catalogue round, I'll have a look, I'll order something from you. Because they're your friends, so you'll, they'll support you in your new adventure. Um, and also, you never know, one of those, or more of those, might say, oh, you know what, I've been thinking of doing something to earn a bit of extra money as well. Can you tell me a bit about it? So that's something that you can get started with straight away. Hi, Neil. Don't worry, mate. Glad you could make it. Um, and then when the catalogues arrive, first thing to do is to prepare them. So, And I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment. But also show them to those local friends and family. So just say, oh, can I just drop one around, have a little look at it. If there's anything you'd like to order from me to help me get started and get my first order in, that would be great. So. Um, Getting your kind of friends and family involved at the beginning is a great way to, to get a kickstart to your business. Okay, quick question. I I was going to say who's received their catalogs yet, but as far as I can see, yeah, uh, everybody you can think see on the webinar tonight is a I going to say a tried and tested um, distributor. But I know you're all quite experienced, so um, I'm sure you've all received your catalogs and been putting them out like mad. The 30-day bonus. Okay, so Clean Easy operates a number of incentives to help you get started, to encourage you to get started. And the 30-day bonus, your target is to get 500 bonus points, which is about £600 in orders, um, in your first 30 days. And as you can see there, it's called the 30-day bonus. Quick question for people. Now, this is a good one, as uh, I think everybody here is um, reasonably experienced. Can you remember when you first started, and um, if you think back when you when you first started, getting £600 worth of orders in your first 30 days, do you remember thinking whether that was hard or easy for you? Yeah, easy if you were at the books. Hard, Amanda and Andrew. Anyone else remember? Good. Hard with 50 books. Yeah, yeah, true. I, I got to admit, with 250 books now, it's certainly easier than if you were starting, say, if you when you were starting on break free and you only had 10, then it was much harder. But certainly when you could start with 50 books, that was quite hard. And I think the answer is kind of yes. And the reason for that is um, 
you can influence it a lot by putting in the effort, getting your catalogs out, you know, at least once and preferably twice a week. You can just about get them out three times a week as well if you want to. And um, but it also just depends a little bit on your area. So th there's no kind of yes or no. Some people find it easy. Some people um, find it more of a challenge. But the benefit of going for this target is, um, it, in fact, it's it's if you can just aim to get one order a week in. And at the beginning, you should be aiming to get um, at least £150 when you put an order in. Because if you put £150 worth of orders in, you get free delivery and you get 50 free catalogues as part of your 30-day bonus. So, if you're aiming to get £150 a week in orders, if you're delivering 250 catalogues a week, so that's just getting your catalogues out once a week, and um, that should be taking you around eight to ten hours. Again, it varies. If you live in a, you know, a town with lots and lots of terraced houses where the, the doors are right on the footpath, you know, you can probably get 250 catalogues out in an hour. If you live in an area with long driveways, then obviously it's going to take you a lot longer. And um, over a period of time, you'll build up to an average of about a pound per catalogue. So, if you're aiming to get a pound worth of, uh, sorry, 150 pounds worth of orders, and you're putting 250 catalogues a week out you've got a pretty good chance of hitting that target. And what would the result be? Well, basically, you get your first income. If you can hit £600 worth of orders, you'll have made yourself 120 odd quid just from your commission, from that, um, the 21% the from those orders. You get 250 extra full catalogue sets. Now, the way they've done this, this has kind of changed a couple of times recently. Actually, this, this slide is not right now. The way clean as you do it now is every order that you put in for £150 or more, you will receive 50 sets of catalogues with that. So in your 30 days, if you're doing one order a week, £150 worth of orders a week, that would be four lots of 50 catalogues, so that would be 200 catalogues. But clean as you say, there's no limit to how many orders you put in. So actually, if you're doing above average, and actually above average sounds fantastic, but actually... 50% of the people are going to do above average anyway, because that's the definition of an average. So if you're one of the ones that's doing above average, if you can get five or six orders in in your first 30 days, then you could end up with 300 or more sets of catalogues on top of the 250 that you started. Now the beauty of this is that when you're putting catalogues out a lot, especially at the beginning, you will lose catalogues. You know, there will be people that throw them away, or dogs that eat them, or they get left out in the rain, or whatever. Um, but the beauty of this is, for every order you put in, an extra 50 catalogues. So at the end of your first 30 days, when you're going back after that to just deliver to the people who ordered from you, or at least put the catalogue back out for you, you've got lots and lots of catalogues. So you're really in a great position to um, to kind of move on then and, and head towards you know trying to get your your next bonuses and so on. Um, right, sorry. So. That's your first target. Your first target that you're aiming for is that 30-day bonus. So, in order to do that, to get your catalogues ready to put out, you need to prepare them. And there's a, a few things that you just need to be aware of. So, in each plastic bag, what you should be doing, firstly, you need to personalise all of the stuff. So, the catalogues. You get sticky labels um, with your name and telephone number and address and so on. So, make sure you put one on the back of each catalogue. There's a little space in the bottom left-hand corner. To, um, to put a sticky label so your customers know how to contact you. Your day slips, which will, depending on where you get them from and if your sponsor helps you and so on, your day slips will look something like this. So these are uh, this is a copy of one that uh, myself and Sarah use. Um, so again, your name is on there. And this is really, really important that your customers start to see your name because after a while, they order from you. They don't just order from Clean Easy. So they need to know who you are and get your name in front of them as much as possible. And also put a sticky label on each of your order forms. And then once you've done that, you make your pack up. You've got your, your plastic bags that came in your starter kit. And you should make every pack the same. Um, and what I usually recommend is, and again, I would speak to your, your sponsor or your upline, because there may be a few small differences. But I have the, order, the, the day slip at the front, so that the customer can immediately see, even if they don't want to look at the, the, the catalogue at that time, they can immediately see when you're going to collect it, because the most important thing is just to get the catalogue back again. So, day slip at the front, and then I have the order form just behind that, and then the catalogue's behind that. Now, the catalogue that's facing the back, so the, on the other side, if you like, I always put that in upside down and back to front, 
and it kind of doesn't matter exactly how. The, the reason for that is um, when you come back to collect the catalogues, you can usually tell whether somebody's looked at it or not. And if somebody looks at it, that's a good sign that they might be interested in buying, even if they didn't buy this time. That's useful information to, to bear in mind going forward. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so yeah, so as I say, day slip at the front there, I always have the order form just behind it so that when you're going back picking them up, you can pretty much see if somebody hasn't looked at the catalogue but they put it out for you, at least you can see the order form is right at the front and you can see whether they've written on it or not. If your order form is tucked away as you're preparing it, then every single catalogue that you pick up you have to stop and have a little look inside just to see if they've put an order on for you. Um, and the other thing is, as you're starting to do this, um, uh, put your catalogues in and out regularly, you should change the, the plastic bags uh, regularly. Some people change them every single time. I tend to just kind of make a decision as I'm, as I'm kind of tidying them up a little bit. If they've been well looked after and they've been left in the porch or something like that, then they'll, they'll, you know, they'll still be nice and shiny. And obviously, after they've been left out in the rain or the, the, the dry for a little while, they get a bit tatty. And this is your shop window, so it's important to just change those plastic bags regularly so they look nice and clean and shiny for your customers. Okay, so that's kind of how to prepare the catalogues. So basically, if you've done that properly, you should have several boxes full of catalogue packs all ready to go out. The next step is to plan where you're going to deliver your catalogues. Now, planning is a, is a it's kind of, doesn't sound very exciting, but it's a really important part of being a distributor. And one of the reasons for this is the difference between having a job and being self-employed. When you've got a job, basically you just sort of turn up for work at whatever time, 9 o'clock, your boss tells you what to do and, and when you're allowed to go home. So you kind of don't really need a plan because you get told typically this is what you've got to do. As a clean, easy distributor, though, the only boss is yourself. So if you start to think, oh, well, in the morning, I'll see how I feel, and, and if I'm in a good mood, I'll put the catalogues out, or I'll see what the weather's like, or um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll see if anyone gives me a call, and, and if we're going out somewhere, then I'll do the catalogues the next day. If you just do it a bit hit and miss like that, it's so easy to, to get to the end of three or four weeks and find, find that you've only put your catalogues out once, and you haven't made, made very much money, and you're feeling really disheartened. So what you need to do is make a plan for you know, how much time you're going to spend on this business and how much money you're wanting to earn from it. And your sponsor, your upline, should be able to help you. you know, if you're looking for an extra 50 or 100 pounds a week and you've got 8, 10, 12 hours a week to spend on it, then you can make a, ni a nice plan that will just say something like, Monday morning, put my catalogues out. Wednesday afternoon, collect them back up again. Thursday morning, put my catalogues back out. Saturday morning, pick them back up again, and Saturday afternoon, put the order in, you know, whatever it might be. And then you don't have to think, you know, am I in the mood for putting the catalogues out? Do I feel like doing it? You just make that plan to fit around your other uh, commitments. You know, if you've got children or, or school runs or whatever to do, then you can fit, that, fit your clean, easy business around those commitments, but make that plan and stick to it. Um, as I said there, don't think, shall I go out today or not? Because if you're thinking like that, there's always going to be something else that you might want to do. And it's so easy just to get out of the habit of doing it. Um, I always recommend to my team a 6 by 4 routine. Um, what I mean by that is I deliver a catalogue back to the same people once every four weeks. So if you're putting your catalogues out twice a week, first time you put them out to a new set of houses, and then another new set, the following week, new houses again, new houses again. So probably eight times you'll be going to different houses every single time. After four weeks, you come back to the beginning again and start delivering back to those houses that you did in the first time. Um, this is just to show your customers that you're delivering to them regularly, that you're reliable, um, and customers will start to order from you regularly then because they see that you're going to be reliable. So by going back once a month, make sure that you give them six chances to order. So what I mean by that is, the first time around, you might get not get an order from a particular house. A month later, you go back, maybe they look at the catalogue, but they didn't order this time. A month after that, you might go back again. Maybe again, they'll look at it, but they don't order. I always say, give your customers six chances to order. There's all sorts of reasons why they might not order from you. 
but there's a kind of magic that happens once they order from you because the first time they order from you that gives you the opportunity firstly to meet them build a little bit of rapport with them get to know their name I talk a lot more about this in the, the building a customer base once you've got to know somebody it's amazing that you know they might not have ordered from you for six months and then suddenly they're ordering every two months from you you know sort of week in week out you get orders from them every every other time that you deliver to them and the only thing that's changed is they know who they're ordering from then anyway so that's um, a bit about the planning when you're deciding where to deliver your catalogues and um, I always use a map if you've got like a map book or you go on to Google Maps and just print a map out with your house in the, in the area in the, the center of it and just start close to home so, you know there's no need to drive kind of right over the other side of town and um, the only thing I, I guess the only time I would say maybe that would be different I've had a students join who live in a very student area and I find student houses are not great as, as customers just because and, uh, I know it was like when I was a student, I wasn't really interested in buying things to keep the house clean. I was spending all my, my grant on, on beer and stuff. So um, so if you're in an area of students, then you might want to go a little bit further afield to find a more residential area, if that kind of makes sense. But other than that, start close to home. There's no point in driving five miles every time you want to go and deliver any customers or deliver an order. And don't flit about. Be kind of systematic. Start off, turn left do this street, do the next street, do the next street, work around in circles around your house so that you're kind of just gradually working outwards and just highlight each road as you do them because that will then show you, you know, where you've got to go next time you're putting your catalogues out um, and deliver to every house, don't prejudge well, I remember when the first time I went out there was a council estate uh, near me um, and there were a couple of houses there with kind of washing machines in the garden and um, trolleys and all sorts of things and I was thinking I'm going to put a, a catalogue through here but I doubt I'm going to see it back again and I'm amazed how many of those customers order from me and still order from me now so just don't prejudge let them decide whether they want to order from you or not if you just decide for them you could be missing out on a really valuable customer and um, and do deliver to houses that have signs on saying no cold callers and no junk mail most of my really good regular customers are elderly people that are nervous of strangers coming to the door especially if they knock on the door and then try to sell them something or anything like that so they don't like people um, kind of cold calling knocking on the door trying to sell them but they love having the time to look through the catalogue in their own time so you know give them a couple of days I would say and um, in their own time have a look through the catalogue and order and once they've met you for the first time and as I say you build a bit of rapport with them and you get to know their name then they really like enjoy that kind of regular you know having a chat ordering from you so always always order deliver to that you might get the odd person who says you know look I've got a sign here it says no junk mail and I just sort of say oh yeah sorry sorry to trouble you and then you know, take the catalogue off them and off you go obviously cross them off your list if they tell you they don't want a catalogue then um, and the only other one that um, uh, area that I would say just to be careful of is if you go to a block of flats and the flats have rather than each having their own letterbox there's kind of like a, a bulk letterbox near the door where you might have you know 20 letterboxes you know one on top of the other it's tempting to think um, oh, this is brilliant you know I can get 20 letterboxes out it takes me about 25 seconds uh, 20 catalogues out in about 25 seconds the problem with that is when people then come to enter their letterbox if they decide they don't want it they'll put it on the floor just below the letter boxes for you to pick up which is very kind of them the only thing is when you go back there and there are seven of them there and you're thinking hold on there's 20 boxes which of these ones have I got to go back to there's 13 that I haven't got yet and you've got no idea which ones you've got back and which ones you haven't there are ways around it so you could you know you could put a little sticky number one number two number three on the plastic bag or something like that and um, what I've always done in the past is and um, when I go to those flats I just go to them once every six months when I'm doing a changeover of catalogues. So when I've got my old catalogues and I'm not going to use them anymore, rather than recycle them or throw them in the bin, I stick a little label on the outside saying, Hi, my name's Chris, Clean Easy Distributor. Um, please have a look at the catalogue. If you'd like to order um, or receive a catalogue regularly, just give me a call or send me an email. And then I just pop them through the, those letterboxes and I don't intend to go back for them. 
And I get, you know, every time I do that, I get one or two calls from people either saying, oh, can I order something from the catalog? Or, you know, and can I have a catalog regularly? And if you've got one or two customers, so you're just putting, putting a catalog into, you know, flat number seven or flat number 23, then when it comes back or it doesn't come back, you know exactly who, who you've delivered them to. Um, ignore any other distributor. We've been in business for 90 odd years. Uh, that's not me personally, I hope to, I hasten to add, but the company. Um, and we've been doing catalogues for 20 odd years. So pretty much every town in the country will have a distributor. But there's lots and lots of houses that don't receive catalogues regularly. And when you're first starting off, that's where your customers will come from. And so if you do see another, uh, another distributor's catalogue, just ignore them. They may well be just on a customer base delivering to their regulars and you'll get orders from people in between those houses anyway and still deliver to those houses because it could be that that customer, you no, know, that distributors may be leaving or left and they won't come back and pick up that catalogue or maybe the customer just doesn't get on with them and actually would prefer to order from someone else. So don't pick up their catalogues, you know, you're not allowed to touch them because it's obviously their property, not yours. But just carry on delivering your catalogues as if you hadn't seen them. And you'll be surprised you pick up orders even when there are other people delivering catalogues in the same area. As you're going around delivering them, just keep a track of all the houses that you delivered to. And um, so, you know, I delivered to number one, three, five, seven, nine. And then I got to the, the Johnson Street and I delivered to 23, 24, 25, whatever it might be. So that you know where to go back to. And also, if you do get somebody who comes out just after you've dropped a catalogue through and says, oh, sorry, I don't really want one, thank you all. I already get one from James or whatever it might be. Then you can make a little note in your book to cross that one off so you, you don't have to remember which ones to go back to and which ones not to because you've got it all in, in your book there. Um, always just, I mean, I say close the gates. I've heard other people say, um, you know, leave the gate as you find them. I think the point is if the gate's closed, and you walk through and then leave it wide open on your way out, people just get frustrated with that. So um, I normally close the gates behind me unless it's obvious that it's been left open for a reason. Um, and just be courteous, walk on, on the paths, not across the garden, and just talk to everybody that you come across. You know, if you're cheerful and saying hi, and you're just dropping a catalogue through, then that little bit of rapport will make a huge difference to, to whether people order from you or not. So it's always good to be in a good chatty mood, smiling, cheerful as you're going around. Okay, you've dropped the catalogues off, you've got your records for where to, to go back to collect them. So when you go back to collect the catalogues, then and always, always, always go back on the day that you say you will. Because if you say you're going to pick up on a Wednesday and you don't go back till the Thursday or the Friday, people are going to have a bad impression of you straight away. They're going to think you're not very reliable, which isn't the impression you want to leave. So... Go back on the day you say you will. Take your round book with you so you know which houses to go back to and if, if any have already said they, they didn't want it. And sometimes you'll have you'll have had calls from people saying, oh, there is something I wanted to order. Would it be okay if I dropped the catalogue through your letterbox? So you might have already got one or two back. So you need to have made a note of that in your round book so that when you're going back to collect them, then you know where to go. Make sure you take your thank you slip so you can say thank you for your order. It's just a little touch, but again, it makes a big difference to building a bit of rapport with your customers. And also, not all of the catalogues are going to be out, so take your sorry I missed you slips as well. So that if there are people who are not in and they haven't left the catalogue for you, you can pop a little slip through. And nine times out of ten, they've just forgotten to put the catalogue out. And they'll, as soon as they get home from work or shopping or wherever they are, they see your little slip and they pop it straight on the doorstep at that point. Sorry, I'm just getting a bit dry there, a quick swing. Um, so as you're going round, make a note in your round book for each house that you go back to. Did you get the catalogue back? Because if they, if you didn't, then you'll, you'll, um, you'll want to make a note of that so that you can um, you know, knock on the door or, or go back and collect it another day. Um, did they order from you or did they look at it? And you can tell whether they've looked, as I said, at the beginning when you're preparing your catalogues. If you put one in the wrong way round, what most people do, if they take everything out of the plastic bag, they have a look through. If they're trying to be neat and helpful, they'll put everything back in and they'll try to remember and put it back in the way it was. But normally, they just put all the catalogues in facing the front. So you can see 
it's a different one at the back and it's not upside down it's all the right way around so you can tell even though they've tried to be helpful you can tell that they have had a look at it and that's important because people that are looking at the catalogue are people who are excuse me more likely to buy from you in future even if they didn't order this time actually I'm just going to go back to something I didn't call something I didn't go over here and um, when you knock on the door to sorry when you go back to the house to get the catalogue if it's not on the doorstep just knock on the door and um, if there's somebody answers, just up say, oh hi, I dropped a clean easy cat catalogue through a couple of days ago. I just wondered if you had a chance to have a look through it. Um, and um, they'll either say, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to put it out, and they'll give it to you there and then. They might say, oh no, I haven't had a chance to have a look at it yet. If they say that, always say, oh that's okay, you can keep it for a day or so if you want to, and I can pick it up tomorrow. Because they've suggested, by saying I haven't had a chance, they've suggested they did intend to. So you want to give them the opportunity to do that. So um, I always just sort of say, oh yeah, I'll pick it up tomorrow if you want. And, and quite often when you do that, when you go back the next day, you will get an order. Because they've sort of suggested they wanted to anyway. And then because they've made you come back, they often feel like, oh, well, I'll, I'll do an order anyway. Because he's gone to the trouble of letting me keep it. And he's coming back again tomorrow. So that's a great way to, to just encourage a customer to order from you. But if there isn't anybody in, when you knock on the door, just pop a little reminder slip through, um, and then you know chances are it will be there the next day when you go back because they'll have just forgotten to put it out. To place your order, so when you've collected all your catalogues back, if you remember, as I said at the beginning, if you've got £150 worth of orders, then you get free delivery, and you get, in your first 30 days at least, you get an extra 50 catalogues um, with that order. Um, I would normally say wait until you've got 150 pounds worth. So if you don't have that much in your first pickup, then I would say hold off and don't put your order in yet. Um, however, if you're having a, a quiet start and it's maybe been a week, 10 days or so, um, and you're not going to be picking up any more catalogues for another few days, you might want to put an order in anyway, take the hit on, on a delivery charge, but at least then the, the customers that have got an order are going to get their orders fairly quickly rather than them waiting a fortnight and then think, you know, crikey, if, I, if it's going to be a fortnight every time, I might not order from him again. So, but when you are ready to place your order, um, that's the website, cleaneasy.co.uk. It's important to make a note of that website because you get three different websites when you first start off. There's cleaneasy.com and there's mycleaneasy.com as well as cleaneasy.co.uk. But for placing your order and for the admin side of it, rather than the kind of the online shop and the opportunity video side, then cleaneasy.co.uk is is um, where where you go. Um, I've said there you get an email from headquarters with your password in. Actually, that's not correct now because in the sign up process you choose your own password. So if you've signed up within the last uh, certainly within the last six to eight weeks you will have chosen a password uh, during the sign up process and that's the password that you use along with your account number to log on to your, your um, um, ordering system there. As you're putting your orders into the system um, and I'm not going to go through it in detail, speak to your upline for, for the, the nitty gritty. If you're reasonably competent with computers and websites it's not complicated to find it but uh, if you've got any questions at all go to your upline they'll help you with that. Um, but as you're putting your orders in if you get halfway through and you think, right, I'm going to pick up some more catalogues tomorrow, so I don't want to put my order through yet, then that's okay. You can just log off any partial orders that you've put in are just remembered on the system. And then when you've got more to put in the next day, you just add them to the bottom until you've got your £150 or more. Um, a good time to, to remember uh, the cutoff in terms of when an order will get delivered to you is quarter past three. I always say aim to get in by three o'clock just to give yourself a little bit of leeway. And basically that what this means is um, it's two working days to uh, from you placing an order to getting it delivered to you as long as you get it in by let's say three o'clock. So if you put an order in on a Monday before three o'clock it'll get delivered to you on the Wednesday. If you put it in on the Monday after three o'clock it'll be the Thursday when it comes to you. So just bear that in mind, you know, it can make the difference if you're trying to plan ahead and work out whether you're going to stay in for a delivery or something, that three o'clock cutoff is, is important. Okay, so you've placed your order, a couple of days later, Mr. Parcel Force Man comes along and you will get to know your Parcel Force delivery guy, assuming that um, you're in when he delivers. 
um, because hopefully he'll be delivering to you regularly. Um, and he delivers uh, all of the goods to you. And they arrive in, as you can see there, boxes and blue bags, um, you know, two, three, four, five. If you're putting in an order of about £150, it will typically all fit in one box. Um, unless you've got one or two bulky items like the, you know, the, the extra long dust busters or, or anything like that, which will come in the blue plastic bags. But so one or two or maybe three boxes like that. So basically, once you've received them, you unpack all of the boxes and then you need to sort them out into your customers' orders. So you have your, your order forms that you've collected from your customers. And what I normally do is I, you know, I go through each order form and I say, right, I need one of these and one of these for Mrs. Johnson. So picking them up either out of the box or, in my case, I put them all on the kitchen table. Kind of unpack everything onto the kitchen table. One of these, one of these, put them into the carrier bag. And then I take the blue receipt that the customer has returned to me and I then staple that to the carrier. Now, the order forms come in two parts. There's the blue receipt and the pink bit. And the customers are supposed to keep the pink bit and return the blue bit to you. Um, but nine times out of ten, they forget to do that and they give you both. So what I do is I use the blue bit to staple that to the carrier. And the advantage of doing that is that when I've then got you know, 10, 20, 30 carrier bags all kind of lined up one behind the other, it's easy for me to see which order is for which customer because I just need to look at the blue receipt where they've written you know, their name and what they've ordered and so on. So it's an easy way to, to kind of, as you're driving around or going around with your orders, picking out the, the different orders for the different customers. Um, so I, I then just use the empty boxes to hold you know, 10 or 15 carriers with all the different orders in. Um, and I use the pink receipt as my checklist. So as I'm driving around, I've kind of got the pink the, the, the um, carrier bags in my car, I've got the pink receipts in front of me and I just you know, ring the customer, deliver an order to them. And once I've finished with that, the pink receipt, I just sort of scrumple that up and then throw that into recycling. And that's kind of, you know, once I've thrown that away, I know that that order's been delivered to the customer. Um, when you're actually delivering them to your customers, what I do and what I suggest is give them a quick call first. A lot of my customers have really said they really appreciate the fact that I call them up and say, Hi, Mr. Johnson, it's Chris. I've got your clean, easy order. Is it okay to pop it round? Um, sometimes they'll say, oh, Chris, I'm just about to go out. Could you pop round this evening? Or whatever. But a lot of the time they'll say, oh, yeah, that's fine. Come round. But they really appreciate the fact that they've got a couple of minutes to kind of go and get their money, find their purse or their checkbook or whatever, rather than kind of you turning up on the door, knocking on their door, and they're kind of having to scrabble about back in the kitchen or whatever, leaving you on the doorstep. So just that little call gives them the kind of the, the comfort, if you like, of knowing that you're on your way around. And secondly, it'll save you a journey, because if they're out and you go around there and knock on the door and spend a minute waiting for them to see whether they're in or not, you're just wasting your time. So I would say give them a call first if you've got their number. At the beginning, when you're just getting customers for the first time, sometimes customers don't write their telephone number on, in which case you just have to go around there. Um, You'll get paid typically cash or checks. You can pay with a card as well. Uh, sorry, customers can pay with a card as well, but mostly they'll be paying you either cash or checks. Um, <clears throat> some customers will just give you the check, they've already written it out, and they'll make it either to clean easy or to you. And either way, it doesn't matter. When you're paying for your uh, paying head office for your goods, if it's been made out to you, then obviously you can just pay the cash and the checks into your own account and then pay head office what you owe using your, your debit card or, or credit card if you want to, although there is a surcharge if you want to pay with a credit card. And if the customer makes the check out to clean easy, you have to pay that into a branch of the NatWest using the gyro slips that head office will have sent you. So I tend to prefer to get it all paid for me, and then it's only one trip to the bank, but some of my customers just like to rewrite it or pre-write pre the check and make it out to clean easy, in which case that's fine. When I hand them the goods, I always highlight the blue receipt that I'm giving to them and just say, my details are all on there because there's a little sticky label that just says what my details are. My details are all on there. If you've got any questions at all about the product or if you're not happy with it or it's not quite what you're expecting, just give me a call. I'm happy to refund, you, refund the money or replace it for you if there's anything you're not happy with. This is, again, a really, really important part of kind of building good customer service if you like because if they know that it's really easy for them just to get a refund or a replacement if they're not happy with it they're much more likely to order from you again so let's see how many of you have been on the ball or how many of you have been watching the football 
Um, can you remember when I first started, how many weeks should it be before you go back to deliver your catalogues back to the same houses as when you first started? Oh, blimey, look at that. You're all very good. Look at that. Everyone's right. That's fantastic. Well done, everyone. I can see you're all on the ball. Yeah, about four weeks. I mean, it's not, you know, it, it, you know if you go back in five weeks, that's fine. I would say if you're going back after three weeks, you, you're probably going back a bit too early, but four or five weeks is fine. I, I normally do four. Uh, so that's what I recommend to my team. So, uh, okay, how much in orders should you target in your first 30 days? Can you remember what the 30 day bonus was? How many? Yep, yeah, 600 pounds worth, 600 pounds. Excellent. Gosh, you're all so good. I bet you were all swats at school, weren't you? Obviously, taking it all in. Yes, yeah, 600 pounds worth in your first 30 days, it gets you um, no, uh, 30. Uh, sorry, 50 free catalogs with each order of 150 pounds. So actually, you can go, you can get a lot more than that if you if you want to as well. Okay, quick question then, and this could be for anybody who is blanketing anywhere at the moment, or especially people who have just started. How many catalogs a week are you planning to deliver? Those of you who are already on a customer base, you you probably already got, depending on the size of your customer base, so that might not be relevant. But especially if you're blanketing. Okay, 200 twice a week. Okay, that's good. Jackie, 250 twice a week. Excellent. Anybody else got any any figures? Any anything that they've been doing? If you, especially if you've just started. Hundred a day on a blanket plus a customer. That's fantastic, Neil. That's a great way to grow that business. So. Okay, I mean, you guys are obviously all, all kind of converted and, and doing really, really well anyway. Customer base, 50 catalogs a week. Yep, yep, no, that, that's not unusual as well. So um, I've done about 100. I got a good week from it. Excellent, good. I would say, um, Daniel and anybody else who's just starting, aim to get your catalogs out at least once a week. Um, you will always have good weeks and bad weeks, but if you're getting 200 or 250 catalogs out twice a week, You've got a much better chance of having a good week. If you're just putting a hundred catalogs out, you might have a good week, but you could also have a bad week. And if it, if you're only doing them once a week, you kind of don't have a, a chance to, if you like, get any more orders once you put your hundred out. So, um, if you can possibly do it, yeah, exactly, Kate. That's a great point. If they're sat in your house, they're not making you a penny, so they're much better off in someone else's house. Okay, so just wrapping up now. Um, it's taking a little bit longer than I thought. Sorry, I've been waffling on a bit. And so today we covered um, about getting started straight away. Don't spend days and days and days reading up about how it works. Get those catalogs out because that's how they're going to earn some money for you. And um, what your 30 day bonus is all about, how to prepare your catalogs, planning your week. That's a really, really important part of it. Delivering and collecting the catalogs, putting your order in, receiving the goods and then delivering your order. So hopefully that kind of all made sense. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is one of eight. So next week we'll be doing your first four weeks. So once you've got started, obviously you, you start to know the bits about the catalogues. There's some other stuff that you should be thinking about and doing during your first four weeks. That's what we're going to cover then. And finally, um, these videos, these um, webinars are all recorded. So Daniel, I know you said you, you came in towards the end. So if you want to watch this from the beginning again, they all go on YouTube, and um, if you just go onto YouTube, it'll be tomorrow morning probably before I get it up there. And um, you can watch any of the eight. So if you're kind of particularly interested in one aspect of it, the, the team building or anything like that, then the last time I did the team building one, that will be up there as well. Um, or if there was something that I kind of went through today that was a bit too quick and you wanted to go back over, then you can just watch this again or share it with your team members. But feel whatever, feel free to do whatever you want. And um, if you just go into YouTube and you can see either using that website or just search on Chris Smith Clean Easy, you'll find them all there. Right guys, I'm just going to stop the recording now.